Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel Speed Daisy. So today I'm going to be showing you all the blankets that I've made. And some of them are unfinished, or I don't have them with me because I've given them to other people. But I'm going to show you all the ones that I have right now to show you some beginner blanket ideas so you can try and make them on your own, or I can make a video on them if you'd like. And then I also want to show you how crocheting is a process because these start from all the way from elementary school up until today. So it shows you how crocheting takes a long time and you can get better at it and improve as you go. So now let's get started. So this first blanket starts off in elementary school when I was really young. So this was probably the first blanket that I've ever made. Honestly, not too happy about the colors. But so it is this yellow and blue blanket. And so it's made using the granny squares. And so the pattern was five yellow, then three blue, five yellow, three blue, five yellow, three blue. And so my friends and I were trying to make these for our teachers, and we were like, oh, let's make them by the end of the year. But then as we got closer and closer, we were like, we're not going to finish these. So we just kept them for ourselves. So uh, in the beginning, it starts off really large with all the stitches. But then as you can see towards the end, the stitches get a lot smaller and tighter, which shows you how I've gotten a lot better. I started a long time ago, and then I continued later. And so you can tell that because the blues are different colors. One thing that I've learned from this blanket is that it's not necessarily great to do one granny square and then just build it out and build it out, at least when I was starting out, because if I hold this up for you, the granny square gets really wobbly and uneven, and it doesn't lay flat, which is kind of why I like to do a bunch of granny squares and then join them together so it'll lay more flat, but that's one thing that I definitely learned from this blanket. And so this video is mainly going to be stories about all the blankets that I've made and give you some little tips and tricks about what to do, what not to do. And then at the end I'm going to show you a blanket pattern that I really like and I've made two blankets of, of so far. So stick around for that because that's one of my favorite patterns. And let me know if you want me to make a video on it. So this second one is another granny square and so I think it was a teacher or someone was having a baby and I wasn't sure what gender the baby was going to be so I made it pink and blue and so this is kind of similar to the other one except I kind of mixed up the uh, pattern so I think it starts off with one two three four blue then four pink then three blue three pink two blue two pink one blue one pink and then it uh, increases and it goes so it starts and then decreases and then it increases and it keeps going and so I stuck with the gray square pattern and I did another large granny square like the other one. And so this one was a little bit smaller. I didn't really finish it because um, these just take so long going all the way around and all the way around. That's another reason why I don't really suggest doing the huge granny squares because it just takes forever. So I like doing smaller ones and then joining them like the other one. So for the third blanket that I made, I think it's either this one or I made another one. So I made two blankets for my grandmother's and so they were each, it was the same pattern, but I did different colors for them and they turned out really well, but obviously I don't have them with me because they're with my grandmothers. Um, and so I really love those. It's a really simple beginner pattern and I'll put a picture on it or something if I can find one, but I would like to talk about those if I can and find a picture. We'll see. All right, so for this third blanket, probably, is another granny square blanket, but this time I learned. I decided not to do the big granny square and did smaller ones and then connected them together. So I found these really awesome colors at Michael's, which is where I usually get all my yarn, and I just thought they went really well together, and then gray is one of my favorite colors because it just goes with everything. It's awesome. And so I did, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six rows on each of the granny squares, and then I connected them all together. And so this one is not completely finished. Some of the ends aren't weaved in, and uh, you've probably seen this in joining Granny Squares video, the first one, and the scalloped border video. Let's see. There it is, the one, the one scalloped border that didn't get finished. So there's that end. And I really like this because the colors are really great, and I think it goes really well together. Um, but I haven't made it like all the way and made it really big because I haven't ha had a lot of time. Um, but I really like this pattern and I think it looks really great. So for my sixth blanket, because the other two that weren't shown, but I'm going to count those, this will be my sixth, um, I found a picture on Pinterest a long time ago and it was the vintage wobble afghan and I saw it and I thought it was really cool and so one of my friends wanted me to make a blanket for her birthday. I was like, okay, I'm going to do that for you. And so then I made this really long blanket. And so she is six foot two. 
So I had to make a really, really long blanket. And so I found the pattern on Pinterest and I went to the woman's website. It's called moogly.com, I believe. I'll put links and things like that. And I hope to make a video on this pattern. And so it's the Vintage Wobble Afghan and it's just a beautiful blanket. So on her website, she had uh, all of the patterns. Well, not the patterns, the color scheme of it. And so it's all of these blues and it goes from an ombre, it gets really dark and then it kind of gets lighter as it goes and it incorporates some grays as well. And I saw it and I thought it was beautiful so I had to make it for her. And it's a really unique pattern, it's not like the granny squares or anything that I've done like that before. It's going back and forth in rows which I like as well. One of the things that was more time consuming for it was that first of all I had to make it really long for my friend. But then so each row is a different color so I'd have to switch in between each row, switch colors. And then I would have to at the end weave in all of those ends. And so I think you've seen this in the weaving and ends video if you want to check that out um, because I had a lot of ends to weave in so I figured I'd make a video on that. Um, but it's, it's so beautiful with all the blues going together and it's a really simple pattern. It's only really double crochet and chains so it's really simple and I would usually just watch TV and crochet and make this because it took a long time. And so she, it was when I probably ended it, it was probably around seven or eight feet, but then, so she said that it stretched out a lot, and now it's probably about like nine feet, so that's pretty cool. Oh, it's just beautiful. Okay. Next blanket. All right, so this next blanket is using the same pattern as the Vintage Wobble Afghan, and as you can tell, when I like a pattern, I just stick with it, because I made a bunch of granny square ones, and then the two for my grandmother's were the granny square uh, ripple, I think, and so it's kind of like a chevron pattern. It's a chevron pattern. And then I make two vintage bubble afghans. So I usually stick with whatever pattern that I like most and you can crank out a bunch in that same one. So this is the vintage bubble afghan. And so my plan is it's not done yet, but it's pretty wide and I haven't gotten a lot of length yet. It's probably like two feet at this point. And so my plan is to sew a bunch of sunflowers on it because I think it would look so cool. Let me get one of the sunflowers, one sec. So, again, work in progress, but I think it would look beautiful if you would just sew a bunch of these sunflowers on it. So something like this, and just all over because sunflowers are one of my favorite flowers and they just look really awesome on it. And yeah, I would just sew them in with green or brown thread or yarn. I think it looked really beautiful, but I haven't had a lot of time to finish it. And those are all the blankets that I've made. So some things to take away from this is number one, if there's a pattern that you like, stick with it because there's so many different variations or changes in the pattern that you can do or changes in colors that can be the same pattern but look completely different. So if you like a pattern, stick with it because you'll be comfortable with it. And then number two, if you can do the big granny squares without it like getting wobbly and it's able to lie flat, go for it. But I personally can't, so I suggest doing the smaller granny squares and then uh, joining them together. And then number three is when you pick a pattern, be conscientious of what it entails. So for the ones that go all the way across and you have to switch colors in between, be careful if you choose that. If you don't like switching colors, you don't like cutting off and weaving in all of those ends, be careful before you pick that pattern. And also for the big granny square going all the way around can be a little tiring. So those are some things to keep in mind. I hope you found some patterns that you liked or ideas of things you want to make. So let me know if you like videos like this and if you want to see the Vintage Bubble Afghan in a video, I'll probably make one because I love that pattern so much and it looks amazing. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll put links down below and thank you so much. Bye!